What happens when magic and weight loss collide? And then we travel to South Africa to take a look at a mean-spirited little demon. Now this creature has roots in folklore and at first glance is easily explained away. But if it's just a myth, how did it murder 15 people? Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. We got a lot to cover, and it's really hot. Dude, we're back to that. Okay, so the show started back in, the thing, I think it was June 13th, June 14th, around there, of last year. Today's what? I'm recording this on the 9th. Oh no, I gotta do an anniversary show. I do not have that planned. I have my regular shows planned, but not that one. Anyways, if you listen to the early episodes of Dead Rabbit Radio, I'm constantly being like, oh my god, it's so hot. I had to shut all my windows and shut my fans off. But here I am recording this podcast that 14 people listen to. Here we are a year later, and we get a thousand daily listeners. Thousand people a day listen to the show across all platforms. Listen to it on Twitter. Listen to it on the website, listen to it through podcast apps, listen to it on YouTube. A thousand listens a day. Crazy. That's that's awesome. That, that's amazing. And we only can go up from here. We can only go up from here. So everyone just keep recommending the show. Play it really loud and obnoxiously in your homeroom class or on the bus. And other people will first be annoyed and then go, that show is quite entertaining. What's the name of that? And you turn to them and go, radio, dead rabbit radio. And they're like, oh, it's very interesting. I don't know why you said it like that. And they're like, yeah. So anyways, but let's go ahead. We're coming up to that. And I didn't plan for that. I have just other, we have a great week this week, though. We got some good stuff. Speaking of good stuff, let's go ahead and start with this first one. Now, this first one may come off as a little (laughs) insensitive, and I'm fully aware of that. I'm fully aware of that. (laughs) Now I'm going to drop all to like, I'm going to lose 100 listeners after this one. Okay, so there was, a, I've talked before about doing stuff on conspiracies. Not a, This one's not a conspiracy I believe in, but it's an observation I've made over the years. And then today I was scrolling through 4chan, the paranormal board on 4chan, and someone, and I've thought about covering it in the past, but today I see on 4chan someone actually asked this question. It was very, the thread only had like nine, seven people. I think seven people responded to it. It was a dead thread. But I was like, okay, I got to cover it today because I've been wondering this myself as well. The thread is this. <laughs> this is the question. And again, I, I okay, let me just say the question. It's been my observation, my personal observation and this dude on 4chan. And I also all across the internet. <laughs> I keep trying to spread the blame. And when I was doing research for this topic, I saw a bunch of other people are asking the same question. There's, I'm going to put this in the most polite ways possible. There seems to be a correlation between women who practice Wiccan stuff, Wicca, Wicca, I guess is the term, women who practice Wicca, and it's like a Venn diagram, those same women being overweight. Now, not all of them are, but a good proportion of them. And it got to the point that I just heard 100 people shut off the podcast. I remember in college, I could almost pinpoint... The girls who were getting into Wiccan magic because they were gaining weight. And it wasn't the freshman 15. They were putting on a considerable amount of weight. And at first, it would just happen. Like, I'd meet this girl, we'd be hanging out, and she'd put on 15 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds. And then she tells me she's a Wiccan. She just just started discovering it. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That happened so many times that I remember I was talking to this girl. She was putting on weight. And I'm thinking, okay, now here's the test. Here's the test. I bet you she's going to come out as a Wiccan. And maybe a couple months later, she's like, you know, I've really been reading all this stuff about Wiccan stuff. And I was like, "Mm mm-hmm. Theory proven. Now, let me say right off the bat, there's nothing, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being overweight. I'm overweight myself. So I'm not like, oh, those people are so disgusting. They need to lose weight. I'm not saying that at all. It's whatever. It's unhealthy. It's not good for your body. It's not good for your body to be overweight. Whatever else you want to talk about, body image or stuff like that, is just not healthy. I was 350 pounds a little over a year ago, and it's not good for your body. 
I'm 270 now, and my body's still like, dude, <laughs> get, get some of this off of me. So I'm not trying to shame the way that they look, but it's not good for your body. But So that aside, that aside, there does seem to be a correlation between people who practice the Wiccan religion and gaining weight. It's not that fat people choose to be Wiccans. It's that people who are not fat... <laughs> yeah. People who are not fat seem to gain weight as they start to become Wiccan. Now, I don't know why this is. I don't know why this is. I've thought about it for decades. Like, is there a correlation between the two? And I actually did some research. The 4chan thread basically had three theories. One, that these girls who can't compete with the hot girls and they're chubby anyways, they become Wiccans. And that doesn't wash because I've seen women gain weight while looking into the religion. The other theory was, was that these people are already, again, overweight, and they lack the willpower to lose weight, but they want to be special. So they, neither of those wash for me. Neither of those wash. And of course, you know, there's overweight people of all religions, of all religions. So neither of those really washed for me. And then the third theory 4chan said was people, are, more people are overweight in general. Therefore, you may notice more overweight. But again, I've been noticing this since the 90s. So I remember thinking maybe there is a correlation between gaining weight, being overweight, and having magical powers. I mean, like, maybe there was some correlation between that. I do believe this, that people tell me I tend to look younger than I actually am. I think a lot of that has to do with my personality and the way that I act. But a lot of people think that I look younger than I actually am. I think that fat people tend to look younger because their face is fuller with fat. They don't develop wrinkles as quickly as thin people do. So I do think that's a byproduct of being overweight. A good byproduct. I mean, you'll also die younger. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a trade-off. But is there a correlation between people being overweight and having more access to magical powers? Now, of course, for that thing, you would have to admit that Wiccans have any sort of real magical powers, which I am not... I think that out of all of the paths to magic, you have, like, the Kabbalah, or you have, like, you know, the left-hand path, or chaos magic, or um, the myth mythanthropic Luciferian order. I don't know if they were magicians. They were just losers. But the idea is, is that out of all of those, I think Wiccan is the most hallmark version of those. It's the most, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the most generic, cheesy music, low production level of magic you can possibly have. Wiccan is the magic equivalent of a Lifetime movie of the week. It's just black. So, I don't necessarily... And, and then, so no, I don't think Wiccans have magical powers, so I don't necessarily think that being overweight would give you more access. However, now that I say that, I'm wondering if by being fatter, since weight is proportional to how much gra gravitational pull that you have, maybe actually being physically bigger gives you more pull on the universe around you. And, actually, now we're, that we're on this thing, it's that the reason why overweight people can continue to get overweight because basically their hypersigil is their overweight body. And I'm not making a joke here right now. I'm actually, I think I've kind of tuned into something. If their overweight body is their hypersigil, which is basically their power of attraction, but all they're attracting is more food, they will continue to get bigger and bigger, which will give them a better ability to attract more food to them. And it's funny that I say that because now when I think about it, when you see like those 600 pound men sitting in beds and people go, someone has to feed them. Like who is feeding this person? They're killing this person. It could be that the law of attraction, they're basically, because you are a bigger person, you have a bigger gravitational pull on the universe around you. You can actually, your power of attraction is stronger than, say, like Gwyneth Paltrow's. And th this sounds totally ridiculous, but I actually am starting to take this a little, a little more seriously. Your power of attraction is greater than someone who's super skinny, but your power of attraction is only based on the need of getting more food. And it just keeps coming to you. Like, you're basically, the bigger you get, you're resorting to an animalistic window. <laughs> okay, I'm not saying obese people are cattle. Maybe your hunger over, let, let's say if you had a 600-pound guy who really wanted to be like Elvis Presley, which, I mean, okay, that was Elvis Presley. Say you had a 600-pound guy who really wanted to be the world's greatest artist, but, and he always painted and he always, like, tried to focus in on being a successful artist. However, that was always secondary to how hungry he was every two hours and how much more food he needed. 
So maybe there is a maybe there is a correlation between being overweight and not necessarily Wiccan magic, which is the same thing as just made up wishes, but maybe you have like more of a pull. So technically, as these girls, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Wiccan stuff is real, and maybe as these girls are studying magic and they're building their influence up, they're subconsciously gaining weight because they need more weight to cast better spells. So I know that was kind of circular logic. I, again, I'm not a huge fan of Wiccan stuff, but they're de- I'm going to go back to my, my main point. There does seem to be a correlation between being overweight or gaining. I think the term is this, is gaining weight and joining the Wiccan religion. Not necessarily being overweight and wanting to put on a pointy hat and fly around in a broom. It's not that. It's the fact that I've met women who had a healthy body weight and then they got bigger at the more they explored the Wiccan theology. Now, all of that being said, that incredibly long rant going on, I do have to say this. As I was researching this, I found a Wiccan spell for weight loss. And I remember seeing that link and I was like, because I typed in magic uh, fat or fat, fat magicians or something. And it was all like, this new magic pill will help you lose fat. But in all of that, uh, Google is not my friend. In all of that, I found Full Moon Magic, a weight loss spell to flush the fat. And I thought, okay, what could this possibly be? What possibly could this spell be about? It starts off with a pretty good analogy. And this is something that people who struggle with weight loss really have to deal with. They say, imagine there's a pile of bricks in your backyard and you got to move them. Now, the easiest thing would be to move all the bricks at once, but you can't do that. You have to remove small portions of the bricks at a time, or really one brick at a time, however you want to put it. And over time, those bricks will be removed from your backyard. That's the best way to look at weight loss. It's a day-by-day thing. You just keep making decisions, uh, good decisions, eat less, exercise more. That applies for like 90% of the people out there. There are people who have medical conditions that, that doesn't work for them, but for most people, eat less, exercise more. So... You, it's a struggle, but you can do it. Just like you can get all those bricks off your lawn. Okay, so someone who has less bricks on their lawn it takes them less amount of time. Uh, you get the analogy. I don't have to keep going into it. So anyways, this author said, and I'm like, okay, that's fair. Then the author goes, okay, so the first step, you want to fast. Now, I, this author definitely knows her audience. Her audience is overweight <laughs> Wiccans. Her audience is overweight Wiccans. So there, she says... And this is one of my problems with magic. She goes, okay, so first off you have to do is you have to fast. Now, if you can't fast, you do a light fast with liquid only. No sugar. But if you can't do no sugar, you can put honey in your drinks. And if you can't just have a liquid fast, you can have a salad. But you can only put on a squirt of lemon or just a tiny splash of vinegar and olive oil. Here's the thing. If it's magic, it should be precise. It shouldn't be like, well, do this. But if you can't, do this other thing. And if you can't fast and you can't drink water for a day without putting honey in Honey? Honey. The thickest of all sugars. You're going to put honey in your tea. Because you can drink tea. But if you can't drink unsweetened tea for a day, you do not have the willpower to lose weight over time. And if you can't even go on a liquid fat, not even for a day, for eight hours, then you're going to make a salad. Come on, dude. They're not, they're going to put ranch dressing all over it. You, you know who this is written for. You know what it's written for. Just say right off the bat, if you want the spell to work, don't eat for eight hours. Nothing. Dude, just don't do it. Step two, don't give them all these outs. Anyway, step two is you're, you got to get your supplies together. I laughed out loud when I read the first supply because I thought, I have no idea where this is going. To cast a spell to lose weight, the first supply you need is a brand new, can be used, a brand new roll of toilet paper. And I thought, all bets are off. All bets are off. What could this spell possibly be about? You need a new roll of toilet paper. You need pomegranate or lime. Pomegranate or lime. And they spelled it granite, pomegranate. Now, you're thinking, Jason, you are such a hypocrite. You make so many errors during your show. But I'm not casting, I'm not teaching people to cast a spell. My, well, I guess now I am. But you, if you're telling, so, 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 you should be precise when you're invoking gods and demons. You, your spelling should be on point when you're piercing the veil. 
Because what if someone actually goes trying to find out a pomegranate and, and offers this person a giant rock? You might say that's kind of stupid, but so is a spell. And then you need what's known as espat tools. Now, I have to look up what an espat is. It's where witches go to hang out. It's their coven meeting place. Whatever. You know, make it's, it's a made-up thing. It's a made-up thing. So anyways, you go... So again, now the author goes, okay, so what you do is you take all your supplies and you go to your espat. But if you can't go there, go to your altar. But if you can't go there, uh, do it by a window facing the moon. And if you can, and I'm thinking, okay, here's the th- this is again my problem, and I didn't get to this first time. This is my problem with magic. Science is fairly precise. Science doesn't go if you want to look at an amoeba, use a microscope. But if you don't have a microscope, you know, just just stare at a at a petri dish and imagine there's something in there and if there's no petri dish there then just look at the moon and imagine it's very very precise steps magic is always like yeah if you can't go through the trouble of walking to your your spot where all your witch friends hang out don't do the spell if you it's so ridiculous how loosey-goosey magic is especially and again that's my thing especially wiccan magic when you talk about the Kabbalah stuff, it's very ritualistic. Like you do it this way, or a demon's gonna <laughs> a demon's gonna get you. If you mess up on this circle of protection, you're boned. You might as well have your will written. This one's like, ah, do it somewhere. Eat a salad or don't. It doesn't matter because it doesn't work. But let's assume that it does work for a second. Let's assume it does work for a second. So these are the steps. So the first thing you have to do is you clean and consecrate the brand new roll of toilet paper. Now, just to let you know, cleaning and consecrating things, 90% of the options they give us involve flame or water. Sprinkling water on it, running a candle around it, burning incense around toilet paper. One of the most flammable things, it's basically the most fragile thing in your house is toilet paper. So anyways, you consecrate this toilet paper roll. And then you... Focus on wanting to lose weight, which I agree with that step. You could have visualization. And then you invoke the goddess Venus. One of the main goddesses of the Pantheon or Partheon. I couldn't figure that out in an earlier episode either. But one of the you're going after one of the biggies. You're not going after some no-name god. And I'm sure she's awfully busy. But anyways, you're trying to call Venus to lose weight. And at that point, she comes down. Or maybe she doesn't. I don't know. It's all in your head anyways. But... You tell Venus you want to lose weight. And at that point, you visualize yourself as the thinner you. And when I got to that step, I go, that is, that's it. That's perfect. Visualization is a huge part of working, quote unquote, magic in your life. You visual, and all bodybuilders and all people who are weight loss experts will talk about you have to visualize yourself in your new body. That is 100% a legitimate step when you are working out. So I was like, oh, they're onto something. They're just going to say, visualize each day that you're healthier. And, and I was like, oh, that might work. Then you hold the toilet paper. This, and then it gets ridiculous again. You hold the toilet paper and you charge it with your intent to lose weight. You charge this toilet paper to lose tent. You're like, oh, yes, toilet paper. Venus, give me the strength to lose weight. Please, please. And you don't know whether or not the spell works. This is a very long-term spell. And then you give Venus the pomegranate or the lime, whatever. Yeah, the lime. You give her the lime. So, Which I am, because there's, Venus isn't there. What do you do? Just roll it on the ground? Do you just set it down and walk away? And then for the next five days, as you're looking out your window in your backyard, you just see this this lime slowly molting. Obviously, Venus didn't take it. It's sitting in your backyard slime just sitting on the ground anyways you roll it on the ground or whatever you you give it offer it up as i don't okay but anyways we're getting stuck on that weird detail now here's the magic that was just the setup here's the magic you take the roll of toilet paper and this is i couldn't believe that this is how this spell ended so so let me read (laughs) before i go into this let me read you this section, because I was like, again, I have no idea. Once I realized why she was saying this, I again laughed out loud. Here's what she says. This toilet paper's purpose is going to be different from any other role's purpose. So make sure you put it in a safe place. I was like, what? What? Why? Stash it in a bag under the counter? 
in a cosmetic case or somewhere, no one else will get to it. If you live with people and don't want to risk someone grabbing it, put it away in a bedroom drawer or closet. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> what? Why? Why Why do we have that warning? So this is what you've done. You've invoked the goddess Venus. You've rolled the lime on the ground. This is what you do. You take that roll of toilet paper. And on one square sheet of it, you write one pound. And then you tear that piece of toilet paper off. And you visualize yourself losing that pound. Which, visualization, it's a good thing. You visualize yourself losing that one pound. And then you throw it in the toilet and you flush it down. And then, after a couple days, you visualize for the next few days you losing that pound. And then after a couple days, after you've lost that pound, you take another sheet of paper, you write another sheet of toilet paper, you write one pound, and you take it off and you throw it, and then you visualize Okay. So, first off, don't do this spell if you're in Britain. Because basically you're going to become poor. You're not going to be able to tell the difference between a pound of your weight. I guess you'd write kilogram. Or would you just put gram? Do you... Ah, never mind. I don't even want to get into the UK's measurement systems. Maybe you can do it in Britain. But anyway, so here's the thing. So you're writing down one pound on this and you're fleshing down the toilet. Now remember, you have invoked one of the ancient gods, one of the ancient Roman gods that used to control the world, to charge this toilet paper with your essence, your body weight, in a sense. You have now created the most... You've basically created a voodoo doll of yourself. You've basically created a cursed item of yourself that, if it is destroyed in any way, represents your physical body. Now, you could say, well, Jason, you didn't write one pound on it. It doesn't matter. I'll argue that that doesn't matter because you've charged that with your weight problem. You've charged the toilet paper roll with your physical body. So, if someone does find it... And just starts using it, you'll lose 30 pounds in a day. Actually, what's to stop someone from just writing five pounds on each sheet and throwing it away? And actually, a toilet paper roll has 500 sheets in it. So who is this spell made for? Why not a, why not a, a notebook? Like an 80 page notebook. Why toilet paper? Toilet paper is the most fragile. Like I said earlier, toilet paper is the most fragile item in your household. And you have now linked that item to your physical body. It makes sense now why you would not want anyone to use it. You don't want to wake up one day and you have like, why am I all, why do I have poop all over my back? You don't want the cat to get a hold of it because you'll get shredded. You don't want it to, um, imagine that. Imagine if you, if this spell worked. And you've now created this toilet paper roll. You lose the 20 pounds you wanted to so you could fit into your bridesmaid's dress, whatever. You now have a toilet paper roll that has your essence on it that you can never get rid of. That sounds like a cursed item to me, if anything. If anything happens to that toilet roll, anything at all, you move away and the new owner comes in, throws in the garbage. Next thing you know, you wake up, you feel like you're being crushed in a compactor or that a rat is clawing at your guts. It is you. The most flimsy item possible. You're you're creating a voodoo doll. For what? To lose weight. Absolutely bizarre. I would be terrified if I thought that this stuff worked. If someone was giving out advice like this. Why not turn yourself... Why not say go buy a block of wood and every time you scrape off a splinter, that's you losing... Even that's bad! Because then for the rest of your life, you got to haul around a block of wood. You're basically the log lady at that point. Maybe that's her backstory. Let me just say this. I've realized that pretty much this entire episode is now me talking about overweight Wiccans and toilet paper. So we'll do the little South African monster man tomorrow. I did not plan for this episode to go this long. But let me say this. This is kind of how, I don't want to go, this episode's already gone so long, just of the overweight stuff. But this was my, and I don't know if I've ever told you guys this before, but so I was I was very chubby growing up as a little boy. And then when I hit 17, I was like, I'm done. I'm absolutely done being overweight. I was, I had an eating problem. It's like, by the time I got, my graduation gown had to be custom made. I was so, I was 320 pounds, which back in 1994, basically made me a circus freak. They had to custom make my graduation gown. It was absolutely ridiculous. And I had an eating problem. I just ate, ate all the time. 
And so I remember I would just, I had walked every, I had already been walking before that, I but that's kind of how I unwound, but I just started overwalking. And one day I, um, you know, oddly enough, not a lot of people made fun of my weight, but I knew that there was something unhealthy about me. And I remember one day, it's like one or two in the morning, I was out walking in circles, <laughs> not like little circles, but I was walking around the block over and over again. This was down in Sacramento. And I came in the home, it was maybe like two in the morning, and I went and like was looking in the mirror and I was just sobbing, sobbing. I was like 17 years old. My mom heard me and she came out and she goes, what's the matter? And I was just like, I'm just so tired of being fat. I'm just so tired of being fat. And she goes, well, whatever you want to do, we'll do it. Whatever you want to do. And I decided what I wanted to do was the Slim Fast Diet. It seemed very convenient for me. I started doing the Slim Fast Diet. I started working out. And within a year, I lost, I went from 320 to 220. So I lost 100 pounds. People thought I had cancer. I lost weight so quickly. You can see my rib cage. But the, the and then, but so then you go, well, Jason, weren't you just saying you were 300 a couple of years ago? Like, so how did you go back from 220 to 350? You got bigger than before. An interesting thing happened to me. I have a big mouth. And when I was 320 pounds in high school, I talk trash to anybody. Everybody talk trash. Didn't matter. And I would talk trash and they would talk trash bash. I'm like, what you want to do? What do you, what do you want to do about it, man? And they're like, nah, f- you know, whatever, dude. I'd be like, yeah, that's what I thought. Now, I did get in fights. Sometimes my mouth got the best of me. I did get in fights. But for the most part, it didn't. And then I dropped down to 220. And I remember one of the early warning signs was I was hanging out. A lot of girls were like, oh, you're really cute. Like, I didn't know you were so good looking. That, that type of stuff. That made me feel good. But I remember I went over to my friend Mauricio's house and his sister was like, you used to be so intimidating. Like, you used to be scary, and now you're just a normal guy. And I was like, that was kind of, it was a weird comment. And I remember then, I went, when in college, I got my ass kicked a ton of times. Because I'd be mouthing off to someone, and they're like, what'd you say? And I would repeat it, and then the next thing I know, I'd be boxing this dude. And I'm thinking, what is, why is this guy fighting me? Now, I, I, I won some as well. I didn't lose every single fight as a skinny guy, but I realized something very quickly that because I was the same size as the people I was mouthing off to, they realized, oh, let's go. And I was like, "Uh uh-oh. So I lived in a bad neighborhood and I started, I mean, this is a weird thing, but I started putting the weight back on deliberately and I got up to about 270. So then I was just, and that's where I'm at right now. I was just a big dude and I was able to start kind of holding my own again. But... Then I just let it get out of control. I stayed around 270, 280 for probably about eight years. And then I got a job where I sat down and I was really depressed and I didn't like the direction my life was going in. And I had my favorite foods and they were really fatty and full of carbohydrates. And I just ate and ate and ate and ate and ate. And then I went from 280 to 350 in probably about five or six years. Maybe seven, but the point, it doesn't matter how long it took. The point is I ballooned up to the level that you would see an animated character. 350 is huge. I was breaking furniture. And so I get it. I get the struggle with like body image and being upset and stuff like that. And that's why I'm not trying to be like, oh, fat Wiccans are so funny. Why, why are women fat? I'm not, that's not what I'm going for. That wasn't the whole, and I I think it doesn't really do that in that segment either. But I think it's interesting because there is a version of Jason that when he was that 17-year-old boy crying in the mirror, throughout the multiverse, throughout all the possibilities of my mom saying, in that touching moment where a mother's looking at her son just sobbing because of how he is. She loves her little boy, but he doesn't love himself. In that moment, that moment stretched across the multiverse. And in some of them, I said, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to get surgery. I want to start fasting. I want to join, you know, do cardio. I want to just eat less. I just want to eat veggies. And they, across the multiverse, all these possibilities of little Jason, not little, he's a huge guy, new 17, but Jason and his mom, that one little element spread across a million possibilities. And not a single one in that multiverse did Jason reach for a roll of toilet paper. Use some common sense, people. Toilet paper will not help you lose weight. 
It simply won't. Find what works for you. Not toilet paper, not magic. Find what works for you guys and visualize. Visualize because every day back then and now, I I visualize the body that I want. That's what you got to do. That's what you got to do. This was a weird episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm sorry. I, I originally had planned to do that one segment shorter and then do the Tokoloshi story. We'll get to that tomorrow. So, apologize if this is the first episode you've ever listened to. It's a weird one, but it's a Monday. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be our email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash deadrabbitradio. Twitter is at Jason O. Carpenter. Dead Rabbit Radio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a great one, guys. Peace.